Hello there guys, in this tutorial I'm gonna show you how to mix a song from scratch uh, with plugins only and uh, let's start by the deactivating all the plugins and here's a basic mix just with the levels let's uh, hear how it sounds Ashes to And with a plugin song, Let's start by um, going to the bass. Let's start with the bass and let's solo the bass and the drums, the basic drums. Now with the bass, let me deactivate the plugins. As you can hear, uh, the bass uh, was greatly recorded, but we can make it better. I've added an equalizer. Before. What I did was using uh, two filters, one uh, one band in the 100 area. I've cleaned some mud, and I really didn't have to touch anything else because the bass was greatly recorded. So don't try to fix what doesn't need to be fixed. Then I've added a compressor. You can hear uh, the compressor to make the, the sound, the bass uh, more even between the volumes. Later, I've added a multiple compressor and I compress only the lowest frequencies just to make sure that um, I can save some uh, space for the maximizer in the end in mastering. There's really, there is really no difference. Uh, in the ears, but I'm sure that if you have some monitors, some good monitors or headphones, you could be able to distinguish the difference. And in the end, I've added a, a, a limiter. When I use limiters, and I use them a lot, is not to to destroy the signal. I'm trying to make sure that uh, I can save some room for the mastering and for the loudness maximizer in the end. But it's not my main purpose. When I'm using limiters, I tend to not to destroy the dynamics of the song. That's my first aim. I will never, I will never ever use the limiter to destroy the dynamics in order to get loudness. I never do that. The only reason you can see an L1 in the end of my chain is to make sure that I can use I can use the limiter so subtle that I will make sure that I will be able to take some to make some room for the maximizer, but the dynamics will stay the same. Just like this. As you can hear, um, I didn't make, uh, I didn't destroy the dynamics, and I've also saved some uh, around 3 dBs for the loudness maximizer, which is good. As you can see here in the vocals. 
Ashes of beauty. Ashes of beauty. Ash. I've only touched around one dB. There's no change in the dynamics of the vocals, but I've also saved some room for the loudness maximizer here. That's how I use them. You don't have to use a limiter in every track, but if you do, make sure that you are not changing the, um, the feeling, the dynamics of the song. Never, never destroy the dynamics just for loudness. Never. Next, we can move on to the drums. Let's start with the kick drum. Bypassed. First I'm using an EQ, I'm removing some mud here, some mid-range frequencies, uh, just a bit of the low end, and I'm also boosting around 8k for brightness. Let's hear it. Nothing drastic. Then I'm using uh, the Transex Waves plugin. Uh, it really creates some extra punch for the kick drum, and I'm not a fan of presets. But for this one, the Mega Kick worked really well. So yeah, why not? Then I'm adding a, a multiband compressor. I'm only compressing the lowest uh, frequencies up to 250. That's to make sure that uh, I'm getting some more extra loudness without destroying the signal. For this reason, I'm using uh, an attack of more than 30 ms and less than uh, 10, so I can let uh, the low end breathe. Nothing drastic here, and in the end I'm using an L1 uh, around 2.5 without uh, changing the sound, but also saving some room for the loudness maximizer here. Now we can move uh, on to the snare. I have uh, the original snare here, and I've also added a sample of mine. I, I found that the original snare was a bit thin for my liking, so I've added a snare of my library. It's a Tama Star Classic BB snare. Uh, I've disabled the, the lowest velocities, the lowest, uh, the lower hits of the snare because I really liked the stronger ones. So I kind of uh, blended this uh, sound with the original sound. Let's hear the sound alone. I've routed this signal to this track. So I will, if I bypass this, this track will not work. So that's the signal alone. That's the original track. And let's hear the snare with uh, my, the sample of mine. without, with, uh, I forgot to say that uh, this sample was taken from procustomdrums.com, I'm not affiliated with uh, any of uh, the company, I do not own the company or the products, I just bought the samples and I love them, so yeah, why not. Uh, yeah. And let me show you the plugins I've used for each one. Uh, this snare has too much bleed for me, too much hi-hat bleed, so I like to use uh, a gate. 
Then I'm using uh, any cue. Nothing drastic, just a couple of reductions for resonances and a boost around 3 dB for brightness. Then I will uh, compress uh, the snare. Uh, I really like to emphasize the heat of the drummer. It's like you know, it's like you're feeling the hate, like the the really the, the 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 feeling of the drummer hitting the drum. So I would really like to emphasize that by using the slowest setting to let the punch to let the heat go through, and uh, the fastest release so the drum can breathe. So yeah, ratio is all about you know the sound, and here how it sounds. You can really feel the drummer hitting the snare with more passion. And then I'm using the stock plugin from Cubase. It's Datube uh, 93 Drive. Uh, it's not so so crazy just because it's 93. It's really subtle. So let's hear it. Uh, it adds some harmonics to the sound and in the end, as always, I'm using an L1 limiter. For the sub snare, I've used uh, a fab filter Q again. Nothing drastic, I left uh, these frequencies open and free for the bass guitar and the kick drum. I uh, removed some mud and some ring noise, if I may say. Then I've added an edge comb. I really, I really reduced the signal uh, pretty hard, around 8 ratio. Uh, I let the pants go through, so I used really strong pants. A really slow attack for the same reason, and uh, that's pretty much what I did. And finally, I'm used uh, an L1 limiter around one dB of gain reduction. And when we will hear them both, I've also added in the final track two L1s. I really found it that uh, when I use L1 in series, the sound uh, is uh, more natural to my ears. And if I want to use it more, instead of driving the knob really hard, I'm using uh, I'm splitting the gain reduction into two, so that's the reason I'm using two. Let's hear the snare as a final sound with all the stuff. And let me enable the reverb. I will talk about uh, the sense later. I have one reverb, one ping pong delay and one slab delay, but I will talk this later in the video. Let me enable it for now. Then we can move on to the toms. The toms for me were really greatly recorded and also I didn't really need to compress them. I just use an L1 limiter, that's all. Yeah. Oops. Sorry.
then we can move on to the Rumik. Uh, the Rumik was great for me. I didn't really need to use a plugin. Uh, yes, I might add an L1, but it was so, so, so low in the mix, so I didn't... I'm not sure that it will, will do any harm in the picks. So I just used some of it in the mix. About the overheads, uh, now about the overheads. I used a really drastic EQ because I really like to use the overheads just like, just for the cymbals. Well, many people use the overheads with a snare and uh, with a kick jam too, but I don't know, I'm just not used to it. You can do it if you want. Uh, it's They're the same plugins for the same settings, left and right. So let's hear it. And I've removed some uh, sizzle, if that's the right word. Then, uh, that's pretty dangerous uh, to use the X noiser, which removes some high end. It's really dangerous to use it on the overhead. So, but also I found it to be useful if you really use it really, really uh, subtle. So make sure that if you use it to use it really, really gently, it can make wonders. And again, to use a limiter in the overheads can really kill the overheads. So make sure that it's really gently again. As you can see, it compresses the snare bleed rather than, uh, than the symbols alone. And let's hear them both. Now let's take a listen uh, to the drums uh, with the plugins off and the plugins on. Now we can move uh, to the remaining uh, instruments of the song. Uh, let's start with the piano. The piano because uh, it plays uh, a great part of the song. Let's hear it. And uh, let's hear it without the reverb. Yeah, Pascalis, you're so smart. What I hear is uh, some uh, rumble, some some weird resonances in the sound. So I've used an EQ to take them out. I removed the low end for the kick at the bass. I used pretty lots of uh, reducing uh, for the frequencies. Uh, the mid range was a bit uh, weird to my ears. At last I tried to add some brightness, but just by removing all these frequencies, the brightness came up to the surface, so if I added some brightness, uh, the sound started to sound uh, a bit harsh, so there was no need to add some brightness with all this cutting. Then I've used a compressor, this time I didn't use a 76, I found that the 76 is too, too hard to the transients, so I've used this one. Uh, the piano has a great dynamic feeling and if you use a really hard compressor and take out uh, this dynamic feeling, you're destroying the dynamics and the feeling of the piano. So I decided to use uh, the 2A one. 
the 2A compressor and let's hear it. Even with this uh, compressor, the gain ejection is really subtle, around 2 dBs maximum. And at last, I used an L1. If it's ha if it's uh, if it's really easy for us to destroy the dynamics of the piano with a compressor, you can imagine what we can do with a limiter. So be very very uh, careful here. Just uh, two dBs of gain reduction, which these this, uh, two dBs are not even musical to our ears. It, they're not changing the sound, they're not even great dynamics, they're just wasting uh, some space for our lightness maximizer. So, yeah, why not? And let's hear the piano. Next, we can move on to the violin. But first, uh, we should find the violin. Yeah, I'm so smart. Uh, and the violin is here. First, I'm using an EQ. I'm uh, le leaving this uh, low end room for the bass guitar, as always, and the kick drum. And uh, I'm removing some mud, also some weird resonances. I've also tried to add some brightness to this violin, but uh, the brightness frequencies of this particular violin were not so great. I've added uh, when I boosted for brightness, I added uh, up with getting uh, I don't know how to say some weird phase sound so I prefer to just leave the brightness alone and just get what I can from here and uh, then I've added a CLA 76 again uh, you can play with a release uh, setting so it can match the tempo of the song I didn't want to destroy the to, to even touch, I didn't want to even touch the dynamics of the violin, so I used the slowest attack setting here, and the four ratio was purely to how it sounds. So let's hear it. It just tame uh, the peaks and adds more body to the sound. And at last, an L1 again, for the same exact reason. Let's hear it with a reverb. I will also talk about reverbs later, I promise. Then we can move on the, to the acoustic guitar. The acoustic guitar, just like the violin and the piano, uh, has a pure, pure dynamic sound. The dynamics of the guitar, of the acoustic guitar, is like uh, the most crucial thing when mixing a, an acoustic guitar. So when you're mixing an acoustic guitar, make sure you're not killing the dynamics. You're gonna kill the whole mix. Unless it's a metal mix or a don't know, a popular techno mix that the guitar needs to be really squashed so it can be heard with the other tracks. But usually, no, I'm not uh, really mixing hard with a guitar. First, let's hear it.
first I'm using an EQ, I'm uh, leaving this for the best guitar, the kick drum. I'm removing some uh, mud, some uh, weird um, mid-range frequencies and some resonances. And also by doing that I've gained some really great brightness. And when I try to boost again, I add it up with uh, a hard sound, so I will just leave it alone. Then I've used a CLA-76. Just because it's really hard, a hard compressor, I mostly used it uh, really gently. Our uh, maximum to gain reduction. Or one gain reduction. And finally as a limiter and a limiter. But let me find the loudest, the louder part of the guitar, just to make sure I'm saying things right. Let's hear this. And why do I look into the violin? Yeah. Yeah, I was right. It's the mixing I did there was really gentle, yeah. And let's hear uh, the acoustic guitar with the sand. And the final instruments, we have two electric guitars, one with playing uh, highest, higher notes and one playing lower notes. Let's find them. I've removed uh, lots of uh, low end here and I've added a just one dB of brightness because it was recorded real great. I've also removed uh, a high end. I left this for the hats and the overheads. Then I've added uh, 4076 uh, compressor and a limiter as always. With the sand zone. Let's go to the low guitar. Sorry. I've removed some mud some low end or a lot of low end i've uh, used around i've used 3 dB of brightness and i left this for the symbols again then i've used uh, a compressor and a limiter again Finally, we can go. Oh, let's hear it with the reverb.
And finally, we can move uh, to the vocals. Uh, how about the vocals now? Uh, we have one normal vocal and two harmonies. Let's hear that all together. Ashes to beauty. Let me find a better part of the song. Mm, I think. Had no beauty. Afflicted and crushed, and in this death I tremble. My sin, a perfect match for it. Yep, that's good. Let's hear uh, the lead box by itself with no plugins. Every scar, and in this death, I remember. The rebellion of my well, uh, it's really obvious that it's really untamed, but let's start mixing it. My heart in this death I tremble, my sin a perfect match for every scar, and in this death I. The vocals were really greatly recorded, so I've I've removed the low end some um, some resonances and mud here too and I've added in one dB of brightness I remember the rebellion of now at first I used a 76 compressor for now I'm using the bluey version uh, they're, they're the same things but the bluey version I, it adds something great to the mid range I don't know how to explain it so for this particular vocals I chose to use this one. My heart in this death I tremble. My sin a perfect match for every scar. Uh the ratio is pretty strong uh for the vocals and don't always I don't normally use it so much hard ratio for vocals, but it's pretty untamed, so I need to get to, to tame the the peaks and then I'm using a, a two-way that's uh, the compressor for vocals I, that I use always not always but most of the time because it adds some great character to the sound and it's really gentle for some dead leveling so in fact I'm using 176 to tame the peaks and one two a to for some uh, to give uh, the vocal some dead leveling not always but that usually maintain for the vocals and in this death i remember the rebellion of my heart in this death i tremble my sin a perfect and with all this cooperation it's pretty normal for the S sounds to come to the surface, so I'm using a DSR. Match for every scar, and in this death, I remember my sin a perfect match. Then a limiter, just really, really gently. Match for every scar, and in this death, I remember the. Uh, lastly, I don't usually use a denoiser in the in the last insert of the chain, but uh, with all this kind of compression, I've revealed some uh, background noise and hiss, so I'm gonna use it now. The rebellion of my Just for the beats, nothing special. My heart in this death I tremble. My sin a perfect match for every scar And in this death I remember the With a pli- with a sense The rebellion of my heart In this death I tremble And uh, in the harmonies I'm using the same chain uh, just a bit of different settings, but 99% are exactly the same. Let's hear uh, the vocals with the harmonies. Or let's hear them with the harmonies with the plugin bypassed. 
My sin a perfect match for every scar. And let's hear them with the plugins on. In this death I tremble. What happened? My oh. sin a perfect match for every scar. And in this death I remember the rebellion of my heart. In this death I tremble. My sin a perfect match for every scar. And in this death I remember the rebellion of my heart in this death i tremble my sin a perfect match for every scar and in this now let's move on to the saints mm -hmm. i'm using one reverb which is was mainly for the snare but I decided to send some of everything, a bit of everything to the reverb just to make it feel like they're glowing together. It's like the band is singing to the same room. Then I'm using a ping pong delay. It, the ping pong delay from Echo Boy, as you can hear, ping pong delay. Uh, it's routed to its uh, tap to the tempo. And... Uh, it adds a more weird feeling to the space. It bounces the signal left and right, which is a cool effect. And the slap uh, echo boy effect is mainly used uh, as um, it really reaches and reaches the sound without a reverb. For vocals, for example, you can see here that I'm using a bit of reverb for the reason I said before. A ping pong delay just to give, but it's really subtle, just to give a sense of space. And the slap delay just to make the sound seem fuller. Something like that. This death, I remember the rebellion of my heart. In this death, I tremble. My sin It's like adding reverb without a reverb and uh, you get the benefits of a reverb without the drawbacks of the reverb perfect match for every scar and in this death i remember the then the ping pong delay just for effect and the feeling that he bounces to the space of something the like that the rebellion of my heart in this death i tremble it's really gentle and the reverb thing. Oh, my sin a perfect match for every scar. And in this death, I... I tried to note, um, I tried to use almost the same reverb uh, volumes. So it will make them feel that they're playing the same field. Uh, it's not necessary to do this but I really like it and let's start demoing its sound with the reverb sense on and off let's start with the snare again let's move on to the mix or to the overhead sorry Nothing critical here, but I really like the tail that the hits leave when uh, the when I'm adding the reverb. Then we can move on to the lead box. Oh, we saw that to the harmonies. I hope this death tremble my sin a match for every scar I remember rebellion of my heart in this death I tremble my sin a perfect match for every scar I remember 
we can move on to the electric guitar. the low guitar where is the low guitar where is the low guitar then to the acoustic guitar You do not need, uh, you don't have to be really drastic with all these reverbs. That's what separates the pros from the new bass. Uh, don't want to offend anybody. Just, just do not add too much reverb to make something sound good. Experiment with the EQ and the compressor first, and then add the reverbs and delays. That's my personal advice. Hope you'll follow it and make better mixes. Then let's move to the violin. Firstly, let's find the violin again. Yeah. Let's move to the pianos. And finally, uh, let's move to the mastering chain here. Uh, the denoiser, I'm not going to use the denoiser. No effect. Um, I'm using this one from scratch, from the start of this mix. Let's. I've told you that I had to, to keep the levels around 0 to minus 4, so let's hear it. Let's see, sorry, what where we're at. He's victorious and he missed Yeah, we're good. Um, now, about the mastering thing, I have to say to you that the better you are here, the less you'll have to do here. So I'm using this compressor that I have always owned from the start, as I said to you before. And I used an EQ. I just gave it, that's the normal view. I gave it just uh, one and a half dB broad brightness boost. And just a half dB narrow to 400 Hertz. That's all I did to the mastering. I've also added the same 200 up to 250 uh, reduction for the lows. Really, really sudden settings in here. And two Z clips, which basically work like maximizers. That's all I do. Well, of course, you can send your mix to another mastering engineer to just have a listen to what he'll do to your mix. But the better you're here, the less you'll have to do here. Sometimes you'll end up using just a maximizer. That's all you have to do. Because you rock here. 
that's the main thing. Now, if you do not own any of the Waves plugins or the 76 compressor or the CLA2 compressor, you can use free stock plugins. You can use the settings of these stock plugins to emulate the way these plugins work. What do I mean? Let me use the free compressor, stock plugin compressor from Cubase. And if you want to emulate the 76 uh, attack settings, you can use strong ratios, fast attacks, fast release to tame the peaks. If you want some dead leveling, just like the CLA2, let me find it. You can use, you can disable the auto setting here and adjust the release, use uh, slower attacks and maybe so uh, soft knees to emulate the way this compressor works. I'm not saying that it will work and sound exactly the same, but uh, using free stock plugins is a way to mix your songs, yeah. Why I'm using this? Because I'm used to them. I'm really used to them. They know how they sound, I know how they work, I know, I really like the interface, I can go where I want to go easier and quicker. Uh, just like this fav filter EQ, where is it? That's the reason I'm using it. I can easily use uh, this one, or maybe this one, well, not exactly this one. Uh, I can use this one, if it loads. But for me, this interface is not going to work. And well, it's easy, but not for me. I really like just to double click and add bands here and there, and I'm not, I'm just used to them. So make don't don't feel that if you don't own uh, premium plugins that you can't mix. Make sure that you will improve your mixing skills, and then you will improve your plugins. That's all I'm saying. If you have the budget to go for the premium plugins, just go for them. Why not? but make sure and spend some time improving yourself. Um, thank you for watching this video. Sorry for my stupid accent. I hope uh, the subtitles worked well for you. It's really hard for me to think in Greek and explaining something, not only Greek, but also <laughs> translating in my mind in English. So that's why I'm a bit, you know, slow. <laughs> But thank you very much for watching this video and also feel free to subscribe to my channel, ask me what you want to ask me in the comment section below or even visit my blog and send me an email, check out the articles there, all the good free stuff. Uh, thank you for watching again and have a nice day. There's a face I love Despised by most A man who suffered and bore the wrath alone With tears in his eyes And blood on his brow Judgment meant for
for us A judgment meant for us Thank you, Jesus.